The Miami Heat nearly snatched defeat from the jaws of victory on Tuesday night, squandering a 15-point lead to go into a double overtime matchup and with plenty of help from the Hawks, escape with a win. Sloppy play, poor rebounding, minimal effort. This is a team limping into the postseason, most likely resigned to a spot in the play-in tournament. We'll break it all down in today's episode of Locked on Heat. You are locked on Heat. Your daily Miami Heat podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome to Locked On Heat, your daily podcast on the Miami Heat. I'm Wes Goldberg, editor at allyoucanheat.com. Joining me as always is NBA media member David Rimmel. However you're tuning in on YouTube, Odyssey, or your favorite podcast app, thanks for making Locked On Heat your first listen every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Recording this on Tuesday night after the Heat beat the Hawks in a one seventeen to one eleven double overtime thriller. Doesn't seem like the right word, David. Affair, no. a fa- double overtime affair, maybe something that didn't feel quite right. I, how do you even explain this one? I once enjoyed watching basketball, David. It was, yet again, another perfect encapsulation of the Heat season, right? They started off so well, and the ball is moving their record. 36 different starting lineup. They get Caleb Martin in there, uh, replacing the injured Duncan Robinson. Tyler uh, Terry Rozier sat out the game as well, so Tyler Hero replaced him in the starting lineup. They're playing alongside Nico Jovic, who had a really good game overall. And, and the thought process in that first half was, oh, you know what? Maybe they do have a spark. Maybe they do care about the outcome because they shot the ball well. They were moving well defensively. They were really attacking this Hawks team that was missing Trey Young. And it looked like, you know what? They might coast to an easy victory. Not so fast, my friends. It's the (laughs) Miami Heat we're talking about. And they wound up coughing the ball up in the second half, shooting poorly, not shooting nearly enough squandering possession after possession by just bobbling the ball and not being able to handle it. And you got to give credit to the Hawks defense because they wound up playing much better in the second half than they had in the first. But you also have to give credit to Miami for really playing poorly in that second half. And then a couple of miscues late in the game, they wind up squandering a 15-point lead and then uh, fall behind the Hawks late in the game only to have to just try and find a way to tie the game up. And then the last possession couldn't get a good shot off, go into first overtime really badly. And this, again, they could not score. Neither team really capable of scoring at that point. And in the second overtime, (laughs) I can't believe a second overtime just to take on the Atlanta Hawks without Trey Young. They wound up putting up just enough points to a Hawks team that looked defeated and exhausted. They played like 40-plus minutes. A number of players, a number of starters were just exhausted by that point. Obviously, they're depleted. They didn't have much left to them, and Miami did just enough to win this game. But barely, no thanks to the Hawks, who really, I think, lost this game more than Miami really went out there and won it. Miami's first double overtime game of the entire season, just their second overtime game of the season, their first overtime game since January 15th. In other words, this is not a team that plays a lot of overtime games, mostly because Jimmy Butler has gone for the win every time he's gotten the chance. And that's not the reason why they've lost some of those games instead of forcing overtime, but certainly they've been trying to avoid those situations. Um, You mentioned the couple possessions uh, at the first one at the end of regulation, the second one at the end of the first overtime period, just Miami not being able to get off a quality shot. And it just felt like that was so much of the offense especially in that second half, like they started the game really well. They made like four of their first five, three pointers or something like that. And it was like, Oh, okay. This is very different than that Sunday loss against the Pacers where they missed like 10 of their first 11, three pointers. And I was like, okay, wow. All of a sudden, like the energy feels a little bit better. It's funny how that works. But the second half was more of the ball getting stuck, not getting quality looks, passing just to pass screening, just to screen, not really getting into the paint, not really getting quality looks. They ended up making 13 shots the entire second half in regulation. They had 12 turnovers. 13 made field goals to 12 turnovers in that second half. But you look look at the the final box score here, 25 points for Jimmy Butler, 23 points for Nikola Jovic, 33 points for Tyler Hero. You got 13 points off the bench from Haywood Highsmith, a nice little seven-point run by DeLon Wright in this game too. Like You look at all the, the high scorers here, and you're like, Wow, Miami should have won this game. Why didn't they win this game? Well, the answer is that they got off just 88 field goal attempts compared to 113 
for the Hawks. <laughs> so the Hawks got 25 more shots on goal than the Heat. The reason nice. why? The turnovers. Miami had 18 turnovers that resulted in 20 Atlanta Hawks points. They also gave up 17 offensive rebounds to Atlanta. The Hawks outscored the Heat 23-2 to on second-chance points. So that's how it happened. Miami actually did score relatively well, given the amount of possessions that they had, but they just gave up so many extra possessions to Atlanta, either through turnovers or through giving up those offensive rebounds. Uh, and that was basically why the game was close. Like you mentioned, the Hawks did not play a good basketball game. They yep. did not. They just happened to stay close because Miami was throwing the ball away and couldn't box out. <laughs> That's fair. And look, Clint Capella, uh, obviously a very good offensive rebounder, so he, he deserves some credit. But the turnovers, the poor ball handling, the, the lack of intent and purpose with their offense – a lot of that just kind of felt like it was more uh, just driven by a lack of, I don't know, desire, guts, whatever you want to call it. I mean, there's lots of different words you could probably use. Miami just seemed, really seemed a little disinterested in that second half. And I know in the locker room, they'll probably say, oh, we, we do what we normally do. We took our foot off the gas, et cetera. But so many of those possessions were just blown because they just couldn't execute well and they just didn't seem – intent on doing those little things like rebounding and boxing out and making the right pass and trying to attack the rim. Those things take, uh, you know, a desire and, and a certain level of drive and mm. purpose. And Miami just seemed to lack that in the second half. And yeah, again, they did enough. They got to win. So I guess it's a positive. It just doesn't really feel like when considering that Miami had such a good lead and was playing so well, and so fluidly in the first half, and then wind up completely falling apart in the second half. And playing with such a lack of purpose so it, it really was again uh, a tale of two halves a tale of two different sides to this team perfect encapsulation again of the of the season because miami has just been so d difficult to figure out on a night-to-night -night basis and tonight was no exception yeah i'll give atlanta a little bit more credit uh defensively mm. look they played some drop yeah. and that's a big reason why tyler hero was able to get those 33 points is he was just attacking that drop coverage spamming the Bam out of bio pick and roll over and over and over again, especially late in this game. It was just Tyler Hero running pick and roll with Bam, and it was effective like half the time, but when yeah. it wasn't effective, it was disastrous, right? It wasn't just like, hey, we kind of went into a pick and roll, and I pulled up for a, for a jumper, and it didn't go in. It was more like we go into a pick and roll, Atlanta snuffs it out, and then we turn the ball over, right? And it was either like make a great shot or turn the ball over and give the Hawks free points on the other end. And so that's it was just sort of like a tale of two extremes for Miami's offense here, the the two at the at the end of the the the, the play at the end of the first regular uh, at the end of regulation before the first yeah. overtime, that was definitely Atlanta doing their job. Uh, Jimmy Butler inbounds the ball to Caleb yes. Martin. Caleb Martin tries to get the ball back to Jimmy. He does, or somebody gets it back to Jimmy. J uh, Caleb setting the screen, and yes. Bogdan Bogdanovich just fights over that screen. Atlanta ends up sending two to the ball in a way that Jimmy Butler didn't look like he expected. Jimmy Butler has to go wide to the opposite, yep. to like the far baseline, where basically Tyler Hero was supposed to be coming up to get the ball. And he eventually gets Tyler Hero the ball, but there's absolutely no spacing because the Hawks basically snuffed out the play. Credit to the Hawks defense for that. And at the end of the first overtime, the play never really even happened. Jimmy Butler is trying to get the ball to Tyler Hero. Tyler Hero comes up uh, from the far corner. And it looks like he either doesn't come up far enough and Jimmy Butler passes it to him a little wide. Tyler Hero has to reach for it. It still slips through Tyler Hero's fingers. Maybe DeJounte Murray got a hand on it. Couldn't really tell. But it so. ends up being a turnover. And then the Hawks go to the other end with it. So um, that those were the two kind of mucked up plays at the end of regulation and that end of that first overtime. But yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if it was a lack of desire. I don't know what it was a lack of talent. I don't know if it was a lack of mm. just... This team hasn't played together enough, and it still doesn't really feel like they know what they want to be doing on offense. It just it so often looks like they're screening the screen, they're passing the pass, the spacing isn't where it needs to be. Uh, yeah. But the Hawks also were like, we're just going to let Bam stand in the corner. And if he makes a three like he did in the first quarter, then that's fine. We're just yeah, going to let Haywood points. Highsmith stay. In, we're going to let Haywood Highsmith shoot from the corner. We don't really care. Heck, we're going to we're going to close out on Nico, but we're not necessarily going to be hugging up against him either. So yeah. I just I don't think that teams respect anybody on the heat outside of Jimmy Bam or Tyler in the paint. And so I don't know. I give a little bit more credit to Atlanta's defense, but I also 
This is just kind of Miami's roster. And I don't think this has been why, by the way, this isn't new. This is why they're a bottom 10 team in offensive rating this season. But they did get the win. We're going to spin things positive coming forward. Uh, We're going to get to credit cookies next after this on Locked on Heat. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time. Takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. You just download the app and they have so many different deals. You can wind up saving money on tickets. Even if you get them at the last minute, you could go to a game. Let's say you want to go check out the bar. and see if they finally get another win. And you know what? Another win. First pitch goes up. Yeah, well, they got their first. Yeah, they won their first. They won their first this weekend. (laughs) And, uh, you know, maybe you want to go in there. You wait till first pitch. All of a sudden, ticket prices drop so dramatically. You wind up saving money that if you had bought them just an hour earlier, you would have wound up spending more money. That's the advantage of having game time is you get all the best prices available right away. And they've got these this great feature so you can see exactly where you're sitting from. I've talked about it before. I love that aspect of it. But the lowest price guarantee you know, game time will credit you 110% of the difference if they don't give you the lowest price available on any ticket. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and then use the code locked on NBA. And you get $20 off your first purchase. You might wind up getting those tickets to a Marlins game for virtually nothing. Terms do apply. But again, you just create an account, redeem the code L O C K E D O N N B A, get $20 off. Game time, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Thanks for making Locked On Heat your first listen every day. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube and on your favorite podcast app. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? We'll make the switch to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network your team every day well david it's another miami heat win which means it's time to get in the kitchen and whip up some credit cookies david who is getting cookies for today's win you know i've got to say wes we were talking about this before the show even started and and i i feel disingenuous in awarding cookies because these cookies taste like ash and broken dreams like this is just this is not the usual celebratory cookie of you know giving away to somebody who had a really good game or helped you know secure Miami's playoff future or anything like that yeah they won the game and yet it doesn't really feel like a win on top of everything that's happened over the last week but yet here we are we're giving out these cookies as tasteless as they might be as sour a cookie as you could possibly get I'm starting off with Jimmy Butler he did have a really good game overall I think he had a couple of miscues here there was some lack of fluid offense from him late in the game and he wasn't really able get to get to the cup as easily as he once had, but he did wind up taking 13 free throw attempts, so that's more aligned with what Jimmy Butler has typically done, so he gets three cookies. Tyler Hero also gets three cookies, because if there was one spot of offense that was working for most of the game, it was Tyler. Again, we, we keep talking about it, and just his third game back after missing 20 games, he should not look this good, and yet he has been really, really sensational very effective, coming up big in, in uh, late-minute situations. And he has been really, really uh, solid with a 33-point Audi. Again, he got some of those in the double overtime. But at the same time, I think it was just a really good overall game from him. And I'm also giving two credit cookies apiece to Nikola Jovic and Haywood Highsmith. Highsmith mm. taking some big shots, having some big defense. Nikola Jovic playing solidly defensively, also coming up with some big shots. We keep bringing this up. He had one. I can't recall exactly what game it was where he wound up taking some big threes down the stretch, but he's done it again today. Uh, he was willing to take a couple of threes. Unfortunately, those rimmed out. He just did have that uh, one big three late in the game, but a, a solid overall game from him. And he continues to seem like, I think, assured of being a starter, even once the playoffs do start. So I think he's going to continue to hold down that, that uh, role in the starting lineup. Um, I agree with you. Uh, I also think it's notable that he's been closing these games lately, Nikola Jokic, yeah. and yeah. part of it's Playing the backup defense. center minutes. Yeah, part of it's some backup center minutes tonight. Uh, Kevin Love just six minutes off the bench. Uh, defensively, he's holding his own. He's trying and sometimes drawing charges. The rebounding has been much improved as the season's yes. gone on. Um, yes. we, we've talked about the defense enough. His playmaking, his passing. I know he only had mm-hmm. one assist tonight, but it just 
it felt like he was involved in some of Miami's best actions. And then, you know, getting those rebounds, ripping them down, getting to the other end, pushing the pace, like all that stuff is really important. And it's gone from over like the last week, really, David, like it's gone from, hey, here's like your five or six token minutes to start each half right. to you're playing real minutes now. Right. Yep. And that's why I was never really sure until maybe recently that he was going to be part of the playoff rotation, because, you know, when you have to shorten your rotation in the playoffs, you just look at guys. I'm like, I know he's starting, but if he's only going to play 15 minutes a night for you. That's a real easy 15 minutes to just redistribute to somebody else. Right. Yep. And if you don't trust him to play more than 15 minutes, then why is he in your playoff rotation? But clearly, Eric Spolster now trusts him to play those minutes, uh, more minutes. And now he's closing a lot of these games, too. And. You know, obviously no Duncan Robinson, no Terry Rozier tonight. So somebody had to close this game. But I, right. Jovic did earn it. He did earn being on the court late in this one. Uh, Jimmy Butler, I thought, was really good for the most part. He mm -hmm. had a couple of pockets in this game where he just sort of disappeared. But he did have 10 points in the fourth quarter that helped the Heat come back after they blew their 15-point lead, helped them re-come back in that game and forced overtime. And I thought he was really good overall. Ended up with nine assists and eight rebounds also. Got to the line, 10 of 13 from the line. So a good overall game from Jimmy Butler. Uh, I know we're going to talk about Tyler Hero a little bit more in the next segment, but he, you're absolutely right. You're spot on. Like, he should not look this good, and he looks great. And so this is why, I guess, you sit out as long as you sat out, why you miss 20 straight games is to make sure that when you get right, you are right, and and you look like this when you come back. I mean, it's very similar to what Joel Embiid did with the Sixers, right? It's just, yes. hey, I'm not coming back until I'm ready to actually contribute. I'm not... I'm not trying to knock off rust. I'm not trying to just be on this minutes restriction. Like, I want to play. And Tyler Hero's playing well. So, um, you know, I think... You should talk a little bit about the the closing lineup because the fact okay. that Nico was out there, Caleb Martin, who struggled really badly offensively, did not get that kind of playing time late in the game. Over nine something we, Yeah, we were used to seeing him be part of that closing lineup, you know, and the idea is he provides versatility on defense. He didn't look good defensively. He looked really bad offensively. Uh, no Kevin Love either, as you pointed out before. And maybe Nico isn't out there if Terry Rozier is available. And then you put kind of Highsmith as a smallish four right. uh, for his defense late in the games and alongside Rozier if he's available. But uh, the reality is that you had both of them out there. And, and, you know, it's hard to really parse anything too positive out of this because, again, with the injuries and the fact that they did struggle on for so many possessions late in the game and then even in the overtime period, that you can't really say this is something that's going to be a, a permanent rotation that that Spoke can go to late in games. But the fact that Nico earned those closing minutes, I think it really should be pointed out. And, and again, just that he's gone through this incredible transformation over the course of the season. He's mm -hmm. earned this playing time. And Highsmith continues to impress as well because he's took some really bad shots. Like he struggled, hit, uh, missed a couple of free throws, missed a bunch of, of three-pointers, and then late in the game hits another three-pointer that was essential for Miami. He started like one for five from three point range and then ended up hitting his next three uh, or like one for four and then hit his next three, something like that. So uh, and the big ones that he was hitting came up, you know, he, he made those late. So you're right about the closing lineup. I don't know that Eric Spolstra has a definitive closing lineup yet. You know, we know Bam and Jimmy will be part of it. Tyler Hero is going to be a part of it. And then after yes. that, it's probably whatever they need. Do they need offense? Then maybe Duncan Robinson or Terry Rozier is in it. I would imagine Rozier is probably in it no matter what whatever it takes Wes whatever it takes <laughs> right so whatever it takes it's still only five guys that you could play so he's got to figure it out he's got to have to make a decision at some point I think it would be those four I think it's gonna I think it would be Rosier if everybody's healthy and right Rosier Hero Jimmy Bam and then that fifth spot would just be who's playing well between Nico Haywood and Caleb at this point right maybe yeah. even Duncan if 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 he's yeah, going off yeah. um so uh, yeah, I think that's probably where we're at with that one. Um, all right, we're going to do a quick Eastern Conference recap and then get to our questions. We mentioned the closing lineup. Tyler Hero, is he just flat out the closer for this team mm -hmm. now? We'll get to that next year on Locked on Heat. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. I'm sorry, not Game Time. Today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off our chest, whether it's big or small, certain things can really start to get to you. And it's important to let that stuff out, especially to someone who's unbiased on your life. And if you've been thinking about talking to somebody, maybe you might want to try somebody other than your circle of friends or a coworker, or somebody close to you, a partner or a loved one. You know, they can have a certain perspective, but it won't be the kind of unbiased perspective 
that you might need to really give you a, a, a new different view of things. And, and sometimes that's all it takes for, for you to start the process of feeling better, to start the process of healing. And if that's what you're looking for, then you're looking for therapy. And if you want to try therapy, then give BetterHelp a try because it is such a great resource for so many people. It's so easy to use and, and it's based basically it to design to work with you and your schedule. It's totally flexible. You just go online, fill out a really quick questionnaire. They figure out what your needs are, where you're located, and whether or not you want to meet by somebody by phone, meet somebody in person, or meet online. Totally available. And then next thing you know, you're, you're partnered with somebody. You work with them. You have a therapist available to you. If for whatever reason your schedule changes and you need to make a change, you can do so. And it's very quick and easy. No cost or change to or anything like that. It's just something that you just need to make the change. And so be it. It's, it gets done that easily. So entirely online. Go visit BetterHelp.com slash LockdownBA, and you'll get 10% off your first month, but only if you visit BetterHelp, that's H-E-L-P dot com slash LockdownNBA. We'll be right back. Thanks for making Lockdown Heat your first listen every day. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube and on your favorite podcast app. Before we get to our listener questions, just a quick Eastern Conference recap as we come down to the end of the season bunch of stuff happening after the yep. NBA took a night off on Monday. Basically, every team played tonight, felt like. Uh, the Knicks beat the Bulls. The Magic lose to the Rockets. The Sixers beat the Pistons. The Pacers beat the Raptors. And the Bucks they actually beat the Celtics. But they did lose Giannis midway through the game with a calf strain. Unclear the severity of that injury. Uh, we'll find out more when he undergoes an MRI tomorrow. But certainly something uh, to monitor because... The Heat could end up playing the Milwaukee Bucks in the first round, so it depends, you know, who knows how big of a deal this injury is for Giannis. So we'll probably have some more information on that by the next time we end up recording here. Um, so after all of this, basically, to recap, the Heat are still eighth in the Eastern Conference, a half game back of the 76ers for the seventh seed. The Knicks have moved up to third. The Magic are in fourth. The Cavs are in fifth. The Pacers are in sixth, a game and a half up on Miami and a game up on Philadelphia. Still possible, mathematically, yeah. that the Heat can s escape the playing tournament, uh, but very, very unlikely. Uh, but that's basically what happened by the Heat winning tonight and uh, and staying alive here. Because as we know, they have to lose out, and then the Pacers, because they won, they're gonna have to lose their next two. And if that happens, then the Heat at least have a chance, but it also depends on what else happens in the. Eastern Conference side of the bracket. So there's your Eastern Conference recap of the night. So many teams, on that? Yes. No, yeah. So many teams still up in the air. Like I, we talked about this on Lockdown NBA yesterday, like 15 of 16 possible matchups, uh, you know, still very much up in the air. Nobody's quite set in terms of like their overall place in the standings. So, you know, the, the first seed in the Western Conference is still very much. Basically, it's only Boston that has assured themselves of the first seed. And that, aside from that, no other team is really locked in for any of the uh, other eight spots in either the East or Western Conference. So it's uh, it's going to be interesting. The next few games are still important. And it was, if you're just you're looking for a, a silver lining to the gray cloud of today's game, is that Miami still gave themselves a chance. They won the game. They did what they were supposed to do, which is to get a win, whether it was ugly or not, whatever. That's subjective. Uh, and, and now Miami still controls their destiny to some degree at least in, in terms of having to win the next three games right they control their destiny and hoping for a miracle <laughs> they do <laughs> get ready uh, stay ready so you don't have to get ready or something whatever sure, yeah, yeah, always, always, <laughs> yeah. yeah stay ready so you don't have to get ready for the playing tournament um <laughs> so that's where we're at uh let's get to our listener questions thanks to everybody who sent in these questions using the hashtag ask lo heat you can email us locked on heat at gmail.com you can follow us on instagram at locked on heat um let's get to this question from jorge who writes in is tyler hero the closer now is he the closer now you look at what he did on sunday in that loss against the pacers 14 points in the fourth quarter to make that game competitive and give miami a chance at the end which by the way i don't know if, even know if we talked about this the last two minute report admitted that it robbed seems like a strong word but uh certainly did not help miami at the end of that game so Tyler Hero has 14 points at the end of that one, hits those big shots at the end, and then tonight 12 points between the fourth quarter and overtime uh, to help put this game away for Miami. So I think it's a fair question. Like you look at his ability yeah. to create off the dribble, 
in a way that Jimmy Butler cannot and does not. Mm -hmm. um, Jimmy Butler, his closing sort of pitch here is, I'm going to try to get to the foul line, but with the way that yes. the officials are calling games now, it's not working that much. I mean, there was a point in the fourth quarter where Jimmy Butler drove to the basket and tried to draw a foul, and it didn't work and just put up like a duck of a shot. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, on the next possession, gets back to the basket, kind of spins, has the layup, and then passes out to Haywood Highsmith, and that ends up turning into a turnover and two points the other way for Atlanta. And then just a couple possessions after that, Tyler Hero enters the game, comes in, runs pick and roll, gets to the basket, goes right into a floater. In other words, looking to score, and then get, happened to get fouled on that and had a chance for a, for a three-point play there with an and one. And I'm like, that's more of what they need. It feels like sure. Jim Butler so often is like, let me try to get fouled, and if the shot goes in, I guess that's nice. Where Tyler Hero's like, okay, let me take that scoring mentality, and if I get fouled, then that's nice. And so... um, Pros and cons with either one of those. I know that you've been on 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 Tyler Hero for trying to get to the line more, but um, yeah. you look at the numbers and and his role and the fact that when he's going, it just feels like the offense just runs so much more smoothly. Yeah, I throw it to you. I, Is I Tyler think Hero the closer now. I I don't think so. Not not just yet. And I think the other factor here that we're not considering is Terry Rozier. Like Terry's come mm. up in in those spots as well, and he's he'll get that opportunity. I I think. I think they're all going to get opportunities. And again, it depends on how extended Miami's playoff run may be where they'll all have an opportunity. And I think that's the benefit. You know, you, you don't want to get so limited and only have that one player that you can go to. This isn't Michael Jordan in the 90s where you knew he was going to wind up taking that shot because even then, you know, he he was willing to pass it off to a number of other different players, you know, Steve Kerr, John Paxson, et cetera, who were willing to take the shot. But Scotty it was his Pippen decision. Yeah. You know, so, so I, it's, I think it's similar to like when LeBron has the ball at the end. It's like he's the closer, whether or not he's taking the whether or not he's taking the shot or not. Like if he kicks out to Shane I, Battier in the corner, that's still yeah. sort of LeBron closing the game. I, I think there were still moments there where it seemed like Jimmy was willing to take those shots or willing to at least set the tone or, or make the decision, as you put it. But then there were also a couple of possessions where, you know, I think I want to say there was one play there, a rebound off a missed uh, field goal attempt by Atlanta. Jimmy winds up with a ball. He's bringing it up, and then he gives it to Tyler, and he says, go to work, basically. And he kind of clears yeah. out, lets Tyler uh, operate. I don't remember how that possession wound up going out. I, I want to say they probably wound up not getting anything out of it because you know, that was so often the case. Uh, but still, I guess it kind of shows some willingness to defer to Tyler. I don't, I'm not ready to crown him the closer. And I think that's kind of the way a lot of people define it, though. You know, I think you have a much broader definition of it in terms of like the decision maker at the end versus the guy who's going to take the shots. Cause we've seen Jimmy take those shots, whether Tyler was out there or not. We've seen, you know, Jimmy take those kind of fadeaway three pointers late in the game. And that doesn't always work out very well. In fact, it rarely does. And yet he's still the one taking those shots because, well, he's Jimmy freaking Butler yeah. and because he is the, the team star and he's going to get those opportunities. So I, I, in terms of who gets that final shot, I think you're going to see Tyler taking it. I think you're going to see Terry take it. And I think you're going to see Jimmy take it on occasion as well. Yeah, there's also a different definition of closer. Is it the guy who's basically running the offense in crunch time, like the last five minutes? Or are we just talking about the guy sure. who gets the last shot at the end of the buzzer, right? Yep. And for, it's going to be mostly Jimmy Butler if we're talking about who's handling the ball the most, so. who's got the highest usage rating in the last five minutes, unless it's a game like tonight where Tyler Hero just got has it going. And yep. we're in double overtime, and Jimmy is obviously kind of gassed at the end, and Tyler's not, and he's ready to go. They did draw up those two end-of-regulation plays, although they did not work, to get <laughs> Tyler Hero the final shot, but for Jimmy Butler to pass the ball to Tyler Hero. And so I don't, like... Now this the whole idea of like defining this isn't that interesting. I'm just telling you what happened. That's what happened. It sure. was Jimmy Butler passing the ball to Tyler Hero. Well, and those were the two end of regulate like that was the end of regulation play, and that was the end yeah. of the first overtime play. And they didn't need to go to anything like that at the end of the second overtime. I would say that Eric Spolstra trusts Jimmy to be the better decision maker, but Correct. I think he also trusts Tyler to be the better shot taker in those yeah. situations. And so yeah. I think you can have a Fair. mutual coexistence of those. And I like that they went to that two man game both times at the end sure. too. Get get that switch. If they switch, if if you get a small that's guarding Tyler switched right. onto Jimmy Butler, then maybe he's able to get to the rim, draw a foul, et cetera. Right. And right. if they play that drop, then you just pass it off to Tyler Hero 
and he gets a decent look. Sounds great on paper. Too bad it didn't work either time. Brian writes in, did injuries rob us from watching a special slash breakout Tyler Hero regular season? Interesting question. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's fair. I, I mean, we were talking about his first half. Like, I, I mean, I brought it up for all the, I don't know about complaints, but I think pointing out some of his deficiencies in terms of, you know, not being the most efficient shot taker and not necessarily finding the right balance as a playmaker. I think he had made some strides in that general area. And I, I think he could have continued to thrive. I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, I wonder how the pairing of him and Terry would have found a way to grow and evolve had they all been able to share the floor during those 20 games when Terry was deferring and not really coming into his own. And then of late, we've seen him be that guy, the guy that you go to in those fourth quarter situations. And he's had some big games for Miami. Would he have had that opportunity if not for Tyler? Would that have changed the perception? Like the, the, the way the fan base has turned on Tyler has been a real interesting one and kind of depressing, to be honest with you, because this was a guy that I think is still genuinely beloved by a lot of the fan base. And yet it seems like people were so upset with him missing time because of injuries, because he's not reliable, because he's too fragile, because he's injury prone and everything else, none of which I buy. And I think that he could have just continued to have a really, really good season. And maybe that would have still given people a lot of confidence. And who knows with him out there, there were probably there probably would have been a lot of games where Miami's offense wouldn't have looked so clunky because mm. of Tyler's elite offensive abilities, and maybe they wouldn't be in this spot in the play in the play in. Maybe they would have been able to lock in a six seed. Maybe they would would have been one of those teams kind of fluctuating between fourth and sixth right now, and they would have had a better chance of just you know at least giving Heat fans something to feel comfortable about. It was like well we, we, at least we didn't wind up in the play in tournament. Unfortunately, because yeah. he did he miss these twenty games, that's where we are now. He was averaging a career high in points before the injury, a career high in assists before the injury, a career high in three point percentage before the injury. Like, yeah, there's no question we were witnessing yeah. a breakout Tyler Hero season. And all those stats are great. The stuff on the court was great too. I loved his attitude. I loved his degaff. Like, okay, everybody's trying to trade me. I don't care. I'm going to go out here and ball. How about that? And I, I loved all of it. I loved everything that we were getting. Uh, a career high in steals he was averaging. So um, I don't think that there's any question that we were about to witness a breakout season from Tyler Hero. Uh, it is unfortunate the injuries that happened, but David, as we know, the playoffs tell the, big, the biggest story and the most important story. And if the Heat can get into the playoffs and go on a run here, and if Tyler Hero can be a big part of that, then the 20 games that he missed and the fact that he only played 40 games or whatever it is, is not oh, gonna right. matter. It's not gonna yeah. matter if he can have a big time playoff run because he had a good season last year too, but nobody talks about it because he, got hurt in the first game of the playoffs last season. So the playoffs are going to be the biggest oh. thing. It's a, ten, it's going to be a chance of redemption for Tyler yes. Hero. Yeah. All it takes is one game winner on the nationally televised game. And all of a sudden everybody goes, Oh yeah, that's right. He's, that's he's right. a really gifted offensive player. And, a snarl. and that changes. Yeah. A game a snarl. Winner a snarl. That'd be oh, nice. That'd be nice. Uh, that'll do it for us today. Thanks for making locked on heat. Your first listen every day, hit that subscribe button on YouTube and follow us on your podcast app.